In January, genealogists identified the bodies of Harold Dean Klaus and Tina Gail Lynn, a young couple murdered and whose bodies were dumped in the woods east of Houston back in early 1981. It was a significant break in a decades-old cold case, but that discovery led to a question. What had happened to the couple's infant daughter, Holly Mary Klaus? The answer would come much more quickly. Last week, six months after the identities of the couple were made public, officials from the Texas Attorney General's office announced they'd found Holly, safe and well, living in Oklahoma. During a brief news conference on June 9th, First Assistant Attorney General Brent Webster provided some of the information officials had about what had happened to Holly, saying that two women who identified themselves as members of a nomadic religious group left Holly at a church in Arizona. That meant the child hadn't been killed alongside her parents and was probably still alive. Also, if you have not done so already, please subscribe to our channel and click that notification bell to get inspired by these real-life stories every day. Now, back to the story. Making the connection between the meeting at the church and Holly's present-day whereabouts in Oklahoma came down to a question about spelling people familiar with the case said. After two genealogists identified the remains found in East Harris County as belonging to Dean and Tina, authorities in Louisville opened up a missing persons case related to Holly. It would eventually include investigators in Houston, Florida, and Arizona. As investigators and genealogists continued digging back into the case, they weren't sure of how to spell Holly's name. Relatives had spelled it both as Holly, H-O-L-L-I-E, and Holly, H-O-L-L-Y. That confusion prompted genealogist Allison Peacock and one of Holly's aunts to request the now-grown woman's birth certificate from the Florida Department of Vital Records. But when they asked for the birth certificate, officials in Florida declined their request, saying that they weren't entitled to the document. They turned to a detective with the Louisville Police Department, the agency investigating the missing persons case of Holly. He too was denied access to the birth certificate. He ended up seeking help from a senior prosecutor at the Texas Attorney General's office, new cold case unit, who had just taken on the case. Another detective in Florida working with the AG's office also requested the records, but also came up dry. After that, investigators enlisted the help of judges and attorneys general in three states to finally obtain a copy of the birth certificate. That's when they saw the sealed record of an adoption, the reason they'd had so much difficulty obtaining it in the first place. Detectives tried to get that birth certificate, but they couldn't because it had been sealed. Debbie Brooks, Holly's aunt, told CNN shortly after the announcement Holly had been found. They had to go through a lot of red tape to get it unsealed. Then they saw an adoption attached. In an emailed statement, Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton said, The work by law enforcement agencies in Texas and Florida to get the birth certificate was a key component in finding Holly. The birth certificate is what led our investigators in the right direction, he said. After attaining this vital document, a great deal of investigative work still had to be completed in order to identify and locate certain individuals to ensure that they, in fact, had the right person. Detectives ultimately tracked down Holly's adoptive parents and then found her in Oklahoma. Holly, whose last name has changed, has not yet spoken publicly about her experiences. Her adoptive parents are not suspects in her birth parents' killings, authorities have said. Peacock, one of the two genealogists who investigated the mystery of Dean and Tina's identity, said the saga showed the importance of seeking out documents and reviewing the record. In our wildest dreams, we couldn't have had any idea Holly's birth certificate was attached to a legal adoption, she said. And certainly that a quest for the proper spelling of Holly's name and being a stickler for details would end up leading to her being found alive and well. While two mysteries related to the murders of Tina and Dean have been solved, significant questions remain unanswered. Who killed them and what did the killers have to do with the baby being left at a church in Arizona? Or did other people rescue the child and take her to safety? One significant avenue of investigation that cold case detectives are examining is the group whose members gave Holly up at the church and other contacts the slain couple might have had with a cult or religious group. Authorities have provided few other details about the women or the cult they appeared to have belonged to. The women were barefoot and dressed in white robes. First Assistant Attorney General Brent Webster told reporters at the June 9 press conference, at the time, the women said their religious beliefs included the separation of the sexes and abstaining from eating meat or wearing leather. 
They are believed to have traveled around southwestern United States, including Arizona, California, and possibly Texas, and had been spotted around Yuma, Arizona in the early 80s, sometimes asking for food. The women also said they left another baby at a laundromat previously, Webster said. The other connection of possible cult members to the case came through Holly's family. In the months after Dean and Tina went missing, Dean's mother, Donna Casasanta, received a call from a man who never identified himself, saying that he had Dean's car in California and would drive it back to her if she agreed to pay $1,000. Casasanta agreed, meeting the driver late one night sometime in 1981 at the Daytona Speedway. In past interviews with the Chronicle, Casasanta said she met three women who were all dressed in robes. One of the women went by Sister Susan. The woman told her the couple had joined a cult, renounced their worldly possessions, and no longer wanted any contact with their relatives. Officials have been trying to track down a police report made at the time. The description, while vague, tracks with the behaviors of several cults known to be operating at the time. The next step in unlocking what happened to Holly and her parents could be finding people who were involved with such groups at the time. Holly is 42 years old and alive and well. She has already been reunited with some of her biological family who provided statements describing the union. Baby Holly's grandmother, Donna Casasanta, said in a statement that finding her granddaughter was a birthday present from heaven since she was found on her father's birthday. I prayed for more than 40 years for answers and the Lord has revealed some of it, Casasanta said. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and consider sharing it with someone who may find it interesting. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.